Growing up, I always wanted to be an entertainer, and I ended up becoming an engineer instead. So I don't get much opportunity to be on stage, but I'm really glad to be here. In fact, the last time I was on stage um, was about 10 years ago, and I walked off stage butt-ass naked to that song you guys just heard, uh, walking that way, with a spotlight on my ass, and I think I blinded a few people, so I don't, I don't want to do that tonight, so I'll just tell you the story about how that happened instead. Uh, so the story started out when I was single and frustrated, you know, like many of us single people were frustrated with online dating and all that, and I'm driving around in the car and I hear, are you tired of online dating? I'm like, hell yeah, yeah. Are you tired of being single? Yeah. Do you want to meet people not at a bar, out flying air balloons and stuff? I'm like, fuck yeah, yeah. So it ends up, I, I end up joining this group and we ended up just not being flying in air balloons but at the bar anyway and I'm still single and I paid a lot of money but I got, I got into the group because a lady sold me and she had these like a low cut blouse with very hefty things and she told me how handsome I was and how many girls I'm going to get and so that's how I got into the group. Uh, but it, it ended up I was, I'm still single, but I ended up with this great story I can tell now. So, um, I, the first, the first person I meet is, and I was her first person to meet, and she's cute and all, and we made a special bond, and, and your special bond friend in the group is like very important, and she was leaving, she was getting deployed to Minnesota, and she says, um, she says, I'm gonna put a, together a going away thing, and she's talking to all the ladies in the group, and she's like, look, we're going to go see Thunder Down Under. And I don't know if you guys know who Thunder Down Under is, but if you've been to Vegas, there's these big buff guys on the billboards, you know, looking all sexy and stuff. And, and all the, you know, the women were super excited about going to see them at Maryland Live Casino. And, I was, you know, me being in my 20s, I'm like well, a little jealous, and I'm like, um, yeah, you know, you know what? We can do better than that. The guys in the group here... We can do better than that. And then I thought that, you know, she was just gonna laugh and be like, yeah, that's funny. But she didn't. She said, okay, oh yeah, I bet. All right, do it. You have to do it now because, you know, you, we, mean, we mean so much to each other and I'm leaving and now you gotta do it. And I'm like, oh shoot, really? Are you serious? She's like, yeah. I'm like, oh my God, dang. So I had to put together a mouse strip show for my friend that was leaving. Um, I don't know if you guys ever put together a mouse strip show before, but there's a lot to it. There's a lot. Um, first of all, you got to brand your show. If you ever put together a strip show, you don't, you don't just want to put a bunch of guys on stage naked. You got to brand it. So I was like, look, if, we're all, if I'm going to get naked, I want to be, like, I want to do it for a good cause. So we're like, all right, we put, we put, together a committee, it was mostly women by the way, so it wasn't just men in this, involved in this, but they, and we were like, alright, how do we brand this thing? Alright, let's brand it by giving money to, to breast cancer, and we can call it taking it off for the tatas, alright? That's cool, taking it off for the tatas and you donate to breast cancer. So, it actually really, really helped us, because we had to sell tickets, right? Trying to sell tickets to women, like when you go up to them and you say, hey, you want to see men naked? And they're like, well, she said, yeah, she wants, but, <laughs> but most women will be like, uh, well, you know, may maybe it depends. I don't know. And then, but once you say it's for breast cancer, boom, we sold out. We sold out the first year, which, which was great the first year, but the second year is a little bit of a problem because we, uh, we had to find another, uh, a, a bigger space. So. We go down to this place in, in Waldorf. Somebody, a friend of a friend, knew a guy that owned like a big party hall out on a farm. And we're like, yeah, we work great. So six of us go down there and we're looking at the venue and, and we're, we're thinking, this is great. And, then, and the guy that owns a place, he's in his 80s or something. And he, he says, listen guys, listen, we're all about, you know, we, don't, we respect whatever you want to do down here. But, uh, you know, I just got to tell you, none of, we are a Christian property here. And none of that no-no stuff, okay? And for some reason, all six of us, he looks right at me when he says that. I don't know why. He didn't know I was in charge, but he just looks at me, 
And he says, uh, and I'm like thinking, what does none of that no-no stuff mean? Like, we're not doing crack cocaine. We're not having an orgy. And I was like, and I wanted to ask him, like, what is no-no? But then I was like, this, this is not the type of man you, you debate with. You just say, yes, sir. So I said, yes, sir, none of that no-no stuff. Um, and, and we got the venue, and then we had to find donors, trying to find donors for breast cancer. We call it Coleman Foundation, right? But, and then, but they said they didn't want it because it was dirty money. Uh, but we did find Breast Cancer Charities America, and they, what they do is they donate money to women that are going through chemo treatment and that can't pay their bills at the time. So we did get a donor, so we were legit. Uh, and you know, the, the other thing we had to do was practice, and practicing is like one of the weirdest, most kind of like, the best ways you can bond with another male is to get naked and talk about like how to get naked better and then kind of dance with each other at the same time. Um, and it was, am it was amazing, it was really weird, but really amazing. So the first, the first practice is down in the basement of my house, and I'm renting part of the house out, and the one guy, there's four of us and a, and a lady, and uh, they, you know, uh, so she's helping us, she, she's got theater, theater experience, she's the only one, and none of us know what we're doing, but the one guy is an older gentleman, uh, hairy, bald head, computer science nerd, not very good looking, but, and he dances kind of like, like this. But all the women loved him because he was, he was, he was so charming, or funny at least. And so he gets done his performance and he's in his underwear and he sits down in the chair as a prop for the next guy. And this guy, he's wild, but he ends up getting on top of that guy in his underwear and he's gyrating like this. With, and the older computer scientist guy, he's going along with it, like, woo, feeling him, everything, I'm, wow. And it's happening in my basement. And, and then I hear footsteps. And I look over, and I see my roommate. And he's standing there, and he's like, duh, duh, uh, never mind. And he just walked away. And that was the first practice that led to many other practices that were really amazing, but there's nothing like bonding with another man when you, you're doing that kind of stuff. And <laughs> so um, the, first, the first, the most interesting thing in my mind was, was uh, recruiting the other guys. Now the first guy I recruited, he was this uh, mysterious guy with these tattoos and all the girls liked him because he was kind of quiet and sexy and didn't say anything. And he's like 12 years older than me. And uh, I go, and so the ladies are like, you got to recruit him. He was my first one. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know what to say to him. They're like, just, just go up this, talk to him. I was like, all right, hey, hey, man, listen, I know we've seen each other around. I don't know you or anything. He's like, I know who you are. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, well, listen, uh, listen, there's no easy way to get to this, so I'm just getting straight to the point. Uh, do you want to get naked? And he's, and he's looking at me, he's like, just staring at me, not saying anything. I was like, it's, it's for breast cancer. It's for charity. And he goes, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. And, that was, and that's all it took to sell the guys to get them naked. Like, they just needed a good reason. And I actually ended up becoming the best man in his wedding years later. Uh, <laughs> so the performance was amazing. We had uh, the first guy, he comes out in a, in a he's, he's this burly guy with hair all over. He comes out riding on a, on a wooden elephant with wheels on it in a Tarzan outfit. I knew he was doing a Tarzan outfit, but I knew he was coming out in a wooden elephant. That was freaking amazing. And then right, he, he starts uh, right in the beginning of the song, it's welcome to the jungle, right? And he goes, welcome to the jungle, baby, woo! And right when it goes, woo, he starts spinning around like this, and he's high-fiving the whole crowd, boom, 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 and then just gets the energy up, and all the women are on their feet. And then we get a sailor, he comes out in his whites, and then we get, Oh, we got this tall, slender, dark guy, and he's dancing like Usher. He's got dance moves like crazy. And then we got a personal trainer. Personal trainer? You guys know who I'm talking about. Uh, he comes out, and he's like stretching this way and that way and doing splits. And he, come, and he bends backwards, and he's got his hands in the chair and his, his head between the woman's legs. And like, uh, there's everything a woman could desire in this show. And... One of my favorites, though, is um, a guy, he came out, he's a chef, and he made a bunch of pastries, uh, uh, truffles, and he, 
he's in his chef outfit and he wheels out the, uh, the kitchen net thing and he turns on the fire and he's dancing. It's getting hot in here and he's getting naked while he's feeding chocolate truffles to all the women. <laughs> right? Like that's fucking sexy, right? Come on, lady. That's feeding you while he's getting naked. Uh, and then he comes uh, running off stage and I'm the first person he runs into and he goes and he grabs me and he's like, oh my God, Dustin, dude, this I didn't want to do it. I thought you were fucking crazy when you told me the first time. I was like, I was going to drop out and you didn't let me, but holy shit. Like, this is the most amazing fucking experience ever. It's nothing like having a hundred women in a room cheering for you to get naked. Why, well, you know, and it just did so much for the men. And to the fact that, remember that older, older computer scientist I was talking about? It took him six months to stop getting naked at every chance he can get. Yeah. We had to tell him, like, stop getting naked. The show's over. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and I ended up, uh, oh, my, and one of the most creative ones was a, a Rastafarian guy, a good friend of mine. He, he comes out, and he's got nothing but a Speedo on, and, and he takes it off. And I didn't see his performance, because he never came to the practices. Um, and uh, he, he, I'm, like, looking at him. He's got this bulge, like, like here. I'm like, what the fuck? It's like true what they say about Jamaican guys. And then, but then he reaches in there and I'm like, oh no, no. And then, but he pulls out a bunch of glow sticks. <laughs> yeah, like, whoo. And they're glowing in his hand. And then he starts throwing them around the audience and all the women like grab him and they start getting up and dancing. And, and then he gets a, his music, he made his own music and it turned into a conga line. And then they started conga lining around the place. That was the, that was the most creative performance, I think. So me, myself, I ended up walking off stage, uh, like I said, but ass naked, but I did it to that song, and I had a cowboy hat on, and I, like, and I turned around with nothing but the cowboy hat on, and I took the cowboy hat off as I left, and I, I won't do that to you guys tonight. <laughs> but, so that, so, oh, and then at the very end of the show, I wanted to leave a, a good, um, a good, you know, soft impression, not too toxic masculinity at the end of the show. So what we did, we had me and my uh, friend with the tat, tattoo arms that ended up being the, I ended up being the best man. We do a little dance to, um, it's, we had the time of our lives. And then we did the whole dirty dancing thing at the end where he jumps in the air and I catch him right here. And of course we're both in our underwear. And then I'm like, like that as and then spinning him around and that was the end of the show and that was the night that a bunch of ragtag guys from Nova got together and said we're going to be better than Thunder Down Under and I think we were but but we did raise over eight thousand dollars for breast cancer and that was our story.